Hello all, welcome back. In the previous lecture we have seen different types of precipitation and also the fall velocity that is the velocity with which the raindrops are falling onto the ground. So, the velocity is known to us. Now, we will move on to get an expression for intensity of rainfall. So, here in this lecture we are going to derive an expression for intensity of rainfall. So, intensity is the term used for representing the rainfall which we are getting on the earth. So, intensity is the unit of intensity is in unit of length divided by unit of time. So, in this lecture we are going to derive an expression for the intensity of rainfall. So, how can we derive the expression? So, it is by making use of an important concept which is known as thunderstorm cell model. By now you are familiar with the Reynolds transport theorem. We have already derived the conservation equations by making use of Reynolds transport theorem and also the continuity equation which is representing the vapor transport in the atmosphere also we have seen. So, in this what we are doing we are going to find out the we are going to determine the rainfall intensity from an atmospheric column. Atmospheric column is nothing but we are considering a vertical column within the atmosphere starting from the ground surface. So, different atmospheric parameters which we will be considering in this particular model is pressure P, temperature T, specific humidity Q V, density of air rho A and velocity of the wind that is with which the air movement is velocity with which the movement of air is taking place. And close to the ground we know these atmospheric parameters that can be measured that is P T Q V rho A V close to the ground we are representing by notation 1. So, these atmospheric parameters can be measured very close to the ground. But as we go away from the ground surface, these quantities have to be calculated. So, at higher altitudes these are unknown. So, these quantities we may have to calculate. So, thunderstorm cell is analyzed for finding out the rainfall intensity using the continuity equation for water vapor. The continuity equation for water vapor we have already derived and the same equation we can make use of here. But before that we need to understand what is meant by thunderstorm cell. It is nothing but a convective cell which is set up in the atmosphere and rainfall comes out of the thunderstorm cell is produced due to convective lifting. We know for the rainfall to happen different types of liftings are required, air mass liftings are required that we have seen orographic lifting, convective lifting, frontal lifting. So, this particular model is based on the convective lifting that is the water vapor, the air containing the water vapor that is moist air is mixing up due to convective action or it is getting uh, it is rising into the atmosphere due to convective action. So, it is a vertical column made up of three parts. Thunderstorm cell is having three parts. It starts from the ground surface. So, ground level we can mark like this from the ground level into the atmosphere we are considering a vertical column. So, this is the top level of the thunderstorm cell which we are going to consider. So, within that we are considering an atmospheric column which has got three parts that is an inflow region that is here you can see through this air will be entering into the cell. So, here we have started with the ground surface one atmospheric column which is extending to certain height we have seen. So, this is section 1 and section 2 is in the 
atmosphere. The air is entering into the cell at the near, near the ground surface that is the inflow region near the ground and the middle part is known as uplift region and the uppermost part is termed as outflow region. This outflow region is opening into the atmosphere. So, these are the three parts of thunderstorm cell which we are considering. We are considering an atmospheric column which has been divided into three parts inflow region which is very close to the ground surface then it is extending to the atmosphere middle part is the uplift region and above that where it is opening up into the atmosphere is the outflow region. Same thing is depicted here we are considering the ground surface as the section 1 and that in the atmosphere where the outflow region is present it is considered as section 2. These are for the convenience of giving notations representing the pressure at the outflow region. So, we can write P2 and now what we are going to do we are going to consider a control volume within the atmospheric column. So, this can be considered as a control volume. The control volume is having a diameter d. This is a circular cylinder. The atmospheric column which we are considering is in the form of a circular cylinder which is having a diameter d and the inflow region is having a depth of delta z1 and the outflow region is having a depth of delta z2. Warm moist air is entering into the cell through the inflow region. So, you can see here moist air is entering into the cell that is near the ground surface we will be having the moist air due to evaporation water from the water bodies are converted into water vapor and the air which is very close to the ground surface will be carrying moisture. So, that moist air will be entering into the cell through the inflow region. So, it will be rising due to convective action within the uplift region. So, as it rises it will be cooled and the condensation of the water vapor will be taking place thus producing precipitation. This precipitation will be falling onto the ground for which we are considering an intensity of I. Now, once the precipitation has occurred here at the outflow region the air which is remaining here will be dry that air will be cooler and it will be coming out through the outflow cell. So, dry air will be moving out to the atmosphere in the upper region through the outflow region. It is dry cool air the air which is entered into the convective cell through the inflow region is wet moist warm air. Now, what will happen when it comes down when it descends down it will be mixing up with the water vapor again. Again and again this will be mixing up with water vapor and it will be entering into the cell again. So, this process is continuously taking place due to convective action the water vapor the moist air will be lifted up into the uplift region there due to the release of heat energy cooling will be taking place and the condensation of the water vapor will be taking place and thus we will be experiencing the precipitation. Once the precipitation has occurred the remaining air will be dry cool dry air will be coming out of the uplift region. So, that will be descending down during the descent it will be mixing up with water vapor again and that will enter into the convective cell through the inflow region. So, this process is termed as convective circulation because once it is entering going out again mixing up with water vapor entering into the cell. So, this is continuously taking place and the process is taking place due to the action of convection due to the mechanism of convection that is why this is known as convective circulation. Now, when we talk about the atmospheric parameters at the inflow region we have already denoted as 1 
pressure, velocity, density, specific humidity and temperature all are represented by these terms with a subscript 1. And in the outflow region we are having the similar terms with the subscript 2. Now outside the cell column what will happen? It will be descending this I have already told over a wide area it will pick up more and more moisture and again enter into the cell through the inflow region close to the ground. This entire pattern is called convective cell circulation because the mechanism behind the lifting of air is here air is taking place due to convective lifting. While uh, lifted up due to convective action and as it moves up the air is becoming cool. Thus, there will be a release of vast amount of heat energy by condensation of moisture that is taking place within the uplift region. And the outflow region is around 8 to 16 kilometer from the ground surface, maximum height of the cell. And for analysis point of view, this 8 kilometer or 16 kilometer will be dividing into smaller smaller reaches so that we can get this atmospheric parameters to be uniform. For calculation purpose, if we are assuming uniform properties, we can take the pressure specific humidities all these values as constant. So, for that purpose while dividing the cell into different parts, different number of uh, strips we will be dividing. So, that length or depth of that strip will be very small so that we can assume that the atmospheric parameters which are present within that particular strip will be having constant value. Now, cross section 1 we know already inflow region which is having the properties P1, V1, atmospheric properties P1, V1, Rho1, QV1 and T1. And in the similar way cross section 2 that is the outflow region is having the atmospheric parameters P2, V2, Rho2, QV2 and T2. Now what we are going to do? We are going to make use of RTT for analyzing the thunderstorm cell model. For all the processes which are involved with movement of fluid, we will be making use of Reynolds transport theorem. Same procedure what we have done earlier, we will be repeating here. RTT expression is very much familiar to you, time rate of change of extensive property dB by dt is equal to d by dt volume integral over the control volume beta rho dv plus surface integral across the control surface beta rho v dot dA. Here you should note one thing, this v dot dA I have put in bold letters because these are vectors, velocity vector and area vector. So, capital V dot dA is representing these are vectors. So, we are going to analyze the thunderstorm cell model using the continuity equation for water vapor. Here what is very important factor? It is water vapor only. So, the same continuity equation which we have derived for the water vapor movement, transport of water vapor in the atmosphere, we will be making use here. What was it? Extensive property was B is equal to mass and beta intensive property we have seen QV specific humidity and mass is changing from vapor to liquid and liquid to vapor. As it moves up condensation taking place, vapor is converted to liquid, comes out and again mixing up with vapor. So, we are bothered about the processes which are taking place within the convective cell, within the atmospheric column which we have considered. So, but one thing is clear, due to condensation we are getting the rainfall that means the water vapor is converted into liquid form. So, there is a change in mass taking place that means dB by dt is not equal to 0. We have already put the expression, put the notation for dB by dt that is m dot v. m dot v can be written as d by dt of volume integral over control volume qv rho a dv plus surface integral across the control surface qv rho a v dot dA. 
this is the equation representing the continuity or mass conservation equation for water vapour. In this we need to substitute for different terms by relating it into our convective cell. What we are going to assume first, our precipitation intensity falling over cross section area A, cross sectional area of the convective cell we are considering as capital A and the intensity of rainfall I which is which can be either in centimeters per hour, meter per second, meter per day but it is uh, usually in meter per second or centimeter per hour when we analyze using thunderstorm cell. But usually when we represent the rainfall we will be writing as meter per day. In a particular day we are getting for 24 hours we are getting a rainfall of this much meters or centimeters or millimeters. So, here we are considering an intensity of rainfall to be I which we are experiencing or which we are getting on the surface of the ground through an area capital A which is having a circular cross section. So, when we are we want to substitute for the area A is equal to pi by 4 d square because we know the diameter of the cell is capital D. Now, mass flow rate of water leaving the cell, mass flow rate, mass flow rate that is this much quantity of mass is leaving the cell kilogram per second, unit will be kilogram per second that is nothing but our m dot v. What will be the expression corresponding to m dot v? We know already density of water is equal to mass divided by volume. So, mass is equal to density multiplied by volume. Here we need mass flow rate, it is not the mass. So, mass flow rate we can obtain by density of water multiplied by volume divided by time. So, that we can obtain by volume divided by time we will get by making use of area and intensity of rainfall. Mass flow rate can be written as rho w multiplied by A multiplied by intensity of rainfall that we are going to substitute here m dot v is nothing but minus rho w i a kilogram per second. The mass is getting taken away from the mass of the vapor. So, we have already uh, mentioned earlier in one of the lectures that if the evaporation process is taking place this m dot v will be positive and in the case of condensation this m dot v will be negative. So, here it is something related to precipitation that is produced due to con uh, condensation and also some of the mass from the water vapour is converted to liquid form. That is why we are putting the negative sign over here. So, our m dot v can be substituted by minus rho w i a. Now, you look at the unit, unit if we this rho w is nothing but our density of liquid water. Then when we talk about the unit density is mass per volume that is kilogram per meter cube, area is in meter square and intensity is in meter per second. So, you can cancel this meter cube from numerator and denominator, it will be coming in terms of kilograms per second. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to assume the flow to be in a steady state. If it is in steady state, that is we may be considering a time interval to be very small within that time interval we are assuming that the properties will not be changing. So, if we are assuming the flow to be steady time rate of change of a particular property will be equal to 0. So, we can tell the first term of the right hand side that is del by del t of volume integral of beta rho dv that particular term will be equal to 0 if we are considering the flow to be steady that is we are having the RTT m dot v is given by these two terms summation of these two terms and due to our assumption as steady flow this first term can be neglected. And m dot v we are having the expression to be substituted. So, we will get our equation like this m dot v is equal to surface integral across control surface q v rho a v dot d a m dot v is 
minus rho w i a is equal to this particular term is consisting of two terms. This is representing the net outflex. Net outflex is the difference between the mass flow between outflow region and inflow region. So, we will be we can split it into two parts related to outflow region and inflow region like this. So, minus rho w i a is equal to surface integral across the outflow region q v rho a v dot d a minus surface integral across the inflow region q v rho a v dot d a and outflow region and inflow region again we have put numbering region 1 and region 2. So, that is again rewritten like this. So, our once we are taking the negative sign to right hand side we will get the expression like this that is rho w i a is equal to mass flow from the inflow region minus that of outflow region. That is the mass flow rate of precipitation is equal to the difference between the mass flow rates of water vapor entering the cell and leaving the cell. Entering the cell means in region 1 and leaving through region 2. This is our inflow region. So, that inflow region we are having a diameter d and also depth delta z1. Why we need to see this inflow region separately? Because we need to have an expression for quantity of air, mass of air which is entering into this inflow region. The cell is a cylinder of diameter d and it is having a depth air enters through a height increment delta z1 and if it is leaving through the outflow region the increment height increment is delta z2 that we have already seen. And now if air density and specific humidity are assumed constant within each increment that is why I told you we should select the depth of inflow region, uplift region, outflow region all these things at a smaller intervals then we will move ahead in the upper direction. If we are taking the increment to be very large, we cannot assume the atmospheric properties to be uniform within each strip. So, our equation can be modified as that is this equation we have already derived. That equation can be modified rho w i a is equal to we need to get rid of this integral sign q v rho a v we are clubbing together this is over the region 1. So, rho w i a is equal to q v rho a v 1 multiplied by d a. What is the expression for d a? We are getting the air entering through this region right both the sides that is it is a cylindrical cell through the circumferential area the air is entering into the cell. So, what will be that particular area d a? d a will be equal to we are having the diameter d and we are having the depth or height of the cell to be inflow region to be delta z1. So, the area will be pi d delta z1. In the similar way area for the region in the uplift region also we can substitute that is minus q v rho a v 2 for the region 2 pi d delta z2 delta z height corresponding to region 2. So, that way we have removed the integral sign assuming that this depth is very small and within that interval within that strip all the atmospheric properties can be assumed to be constant. Otherwise, there will be a variability we have seen the variability of pressure temperature as the uh, altitude increases these values are decreasing oh, and the relationships also we have seen. So, that uh, variability non-uniformity we do not have to consider here if you are considering the depth to be very small. So, the expression we have written in this form and our surface integral term has vanished. Let this equation be equation 1. So, these terms are corresponding to that is atmospheric properties at section 1 region 1 the properties such as the specific humidity, density of air and wind velocity all these things are measurable. 
by making use of the known values we need to get the values corresponding to higher altitudes. So, for that what we are going to do? We are going to consider the continuity equation separately for outflow region because outflow region we are having the dry air. Once the precipitation has taken place whatever remaining is the moisture has been removed out of it or some amount of moisture will be present there most of uh, that particular air will be of dry. So, dry air we are going to write the continuity equation separately. So, continuity equation for dry air if we are writing why do we want that? We need to find the q v rho a v corresponding to region 2 uplift region as a function of other known things. That is we know the these corresponding values at region 1, but region 2 is unknown. So, by writing the uh, continuity equation for the dry air which is coming out of the outflow region, we can find out the relationship for with the those parameters atmospheric parameters which are unknown and we can relate it with the known values. And B is the extensive property that is the mass of dry air and we know the intensive property is dB by dm. If it is dry air there is no change in mass taking place right time rate of extensive property with respect to dm unit mass of the flowing fluid mass of dry air divided by unit mass of flowing flu flowing fluid. Here the mass of dry air and flowing fluid is also dry, dry air. So, the value corresponding to the intensive property will be equal to 1. Now, we are going to substitute in RTT our familiar expression familiar equation. So, there is no moisture exchange taking place in case of dry air. So, LHS is 0 time rate of change of extensive property dB by dt that is for the system, system there is no change in the mass taking place constant mass. So, time rate of change of extensive property is equal to 0 that is dB by dt is equal to 0 and coming to the right hand side the same expression we are having, we are having the expression for beta value corresponding to intensive property that we will substitute. And also what we are going to do we are going to assume steady condition. So, steady condition time rate of change of certain property will be equal to 0. For steady state condition if we are rewriting the above equation left hand side we are having already 0 right hand side first term has vanished and only second term related to control surface will be present net outfl outflex through the control surface across the control surface. So, rho d v dot d a rho d is the density of dry air and now we need to get certain relationship with the dry air density and the moist air density. We know rho d is the density of dry air is density of moist air minus density of water vapor that is rho a minus rho v rho d is equal to rho a minus rho v. So, this expression we have already seen. So, we are just making use of that specific humidity is rho v divided by rho a. So, here rho v is q v multiplied by rho a that we will substitute in the expression for density of dry air rho d. So, rho d can be written as rho a minus for rho v we are substituting q v rho a and rho a can be taken out. So, rho d is nothing but rho a multiplied by 1 minus q v. Density of dry air we have written in terms of density of moist air and the specific humidity. Now, we are going to substitute in this expression for dry air which we derived based on Reynolds transport theorem. So, here for rho d we are going to substitute this particular expression which we have already derived that is rho d is equal to 1 minus q v multiplied by v a and v dot d a. d a is again for the outflow region we are talking about dry air. 
So, outflow region as we have substituted for inflow region it is delta Z2 that is region 2 the depth of the outflow region was delta Z2. So, area through which the air is which is coming out dry air is coming out is through the circumferential area that is nothing but pi d delta Z2. So, that we have substituted here pi d delta Z2 minus 1 minus q v rho a v delta Z1 pi d is equal to 0 that is control surface is consisting of inflow region and un outflow region. So, for both the inflow region and outflow region we have substituted the uh, different terms denoting by making use of subscripts 2 and 1. Now, from this we can get the values corresponding to region 2 rho a v delta z 2 can be written as in terms of rho a v delta z 1 multiplied by 1 minus q v 1 1 minus q v 1 divided by 1 minus q v 2 this particular term 1 minus q v 2. So, corresponding to rho a v delta z 2 we got in terms of rho a v delta z 1 1 minus q v 1, 1 minus, divided by 1 minus q v 2 that we will substitute in the equation 1. Equation 1 we have derived earlier considering both the dry air and the moist air. So, this inflow region and the outflow region. So, this is our equation here in this case corresponding to this particular term q v rho a v 2 we will substitute this entire expression. So, that when we substitute and modify the expression we will get a simplified form. One more thing we need to do we are having a here that is area of cross section of the cell or atmospheric column or convective cell which we have considered that was having diameter of capital D. So, the cross sectional area corresponding to that convective cell will be pi by 4 d square that also we can substitute here. So, this particular expression we are modifying on the right hand side rho a v delta z 1 terms combined together pi d pi d is common to both this pi d is common to both the terms and rearranging the terms we will get this expression rho w i a is given by this lengthy expression. Now, again some pi d is here for in the term a we are having pi by 4 d square that we will substitute in the same equation and what we are going to do we are going to remove the brackets here from the numerator. So, we will be having q v 1 minus q v 1 q v 2 minus q v 2 plus q v 1 q v 2. So, these two terms that is q v 1 q v 2 these two terms will get cancelled q v 1 q v 2 plus minus q v 1 q v 2 those two terms will get cancelled we will be having final expression like this rho a v delta z 1 pi d q v 1 minus q v 2 divided by 1 minus q v 2. Now, for area we are going to substitute a is equal to pi by 4 d square. So, this pi by 4 d square d is here pi is here on both the sides. So, we can cancel that I can be written as 4 rho a v delta z 1 rho a v delta z 1 divided by this rho will be coming to the denominator and d square d d gets cancelled d is there on the left hand side that will be coming to the denominator. So, we will be getting the expression for I as 4 rho a v delta z 1 divided by rho w d multiplied by q v 1 minus q v 2 divided by 1 minus q v 2. This is the expression for intensity of rainfall. So, the rate of rainfall or intensity of precipitation which we are getting on the ground mathematically we can calculate by using these equation 
by making use of the atmospheric parameters. It is given by this expression. So, these values can be near to the ground which are represented by the subscript 1, those are measurable and to, uh, section 2 which is away from the ground which can be calculated from the values which we are having already with the ground surface atmosphere uh, ground surface parameters. So, here I am winding up this lecture before that uh, let me again brief out what we have seen in this lecture. So, after seeing the types of precipitation and fall velocity in the previous lecture velocity with which the drops are falling on the ground we have seen and how much quantity what is the intensity of rainfall we are getting on the ground surface that is what we have seen in this lecture. So, for that what we have made use we have considered an atmospheric column which is having a diameter d and which was having three parts. We have divided the entire column into three parts one inflow region, one uplift region and one outflow region. And through the inflow region air is entering moist air is entering into the cell and kind of as it rises the temperature reduces contains cooling will be taking place and the condensation of the water vapor will be taking place producing the rainfall. So, once the rainfall is produced that is falling on the ground. So, the remaining dry air will be going out of the outflow region that will come down again and mix up with the mo moisture and enter into the cell through the inflow region. So, this is a continuous process this process is termed as the convective circulation. After understanding the process we have made use of RTT for deriving the equation for getting the intensity of rainfall. RTT we have used in two phases one is considering the entire region that is by making use of the moist air which is entered into the cell and which is going out region 1 and region 2 we have considered. And second part for understanding or for relating the atmospheric parameters in region 2 with the quantities which are known to us related to region 1 we have considered the continuity equation separately for region 2 that is for dry air. After getting certain expression by making use of the dry air conditions dry air details at the outflow region we have substituted in the equation which is derived by making use of the entire cell. And finally, we got the expression for intensity of rainfall by knowing certain atmospheric parameters how much is the intensity of rainfall which we are experiencing on the ground can be calculated. So, that much we have covered here. So, today I am winding up the details related to this topic you can get from these textbooks mainly from the applied hydrology textbooks I have taken all these matter. Thank you very much for patient listening.